Right now we've just ascertained that I think the VHF is about as good as we can get it, apart from the uh, microphonicity. Uh, we'd like to get that sorted out at some point, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Probably replace the valve. Let's move on to the uh, broadcast bands and the medium wave, long wave, and short wave, and just uh, see what sort of state they're in. Uh, I'm not expecting that need to be any calibration done on it, but it'd be nice just to just check that the IFs align correctly, and then we'll run through the um, the actual RF section to make sure that's correctly in the line. So I'm going to start off with uh, an IF alignment and I'm going to do that using this uh, Lavelle um, uh, high impedance AC voltmeter which is great for this sort of thing, battery powered which is, uh, which is quite useful. Um, I'm going to inject 470 kilohertz into the uh, parent rod uh, connection and then check for the uh, peaks on the IF and once we've ascertained that the uh, IF's peaked pretty well, uh, I think that we can uh, move on to the RF section. So let me just zoom in a bit so you can see the meter. Hope you can see this display okay here. It's probably better like that. Okay. So I'm going to bring the road and short round to 417. You'll hear the audio come up. At, there we go. Turn the gain down on the, uh, on the Lavelle. We're looking for a peak at 470, and you can see it looks pretty good actually. So that's the Roten Schwartz on 470. I'll just give it a little tweak through the uh, IF cans and see if we can bring anything up. But it looks pretty good to me. Now am I going to get my hand in the way if I... Yeah, right in the way of the meter. That's typical. Let's bring the radio forward a bit then. And then bring the meter around so you can see it's still... Hopefully that will be a bit easier. Okay, so we can still see the meter without any reflection on it. So we're tweaking for 470. The generator's at 470. Let's just see if we can improve this. It's going down. So peaks there. We've got to do the underside. And the meter will move around a bit as I affect the capacitance of the uh, unit as I uh, move it on the bench. And I touch the volume control doesn't help either. I'm just going to turn it over onto its back. This one's not so easy to get to. Up to the bottom of the other core, the second IF. It's pretty peaked as well. Just flip it around. And bring the last core into adjustment. Now see that's having an effect from the um, just even the little slight metal tip on the end of the tool. Let's try back in your view again. I'm trying to find a tool that will go in that's plastic. What sometimes you have to do is you have to go in, adjust, come out, go in, adjust, come out and sort of just get it to its, its best point. Let's just turn that around so I can see it a bit better. So we're at about... Okay. Under seven, just not moving that core. There's always one that you can't get to. Um, let's try this one. Okay, so it's well and truly peaked at seven. Let's go back and check the first one again. Well, it's brought that up, hasn't it? Okay. It's well and truly peaked, I think. Let's go back and check the one underneath. Well, 
up a little bit. Okay, so that's Pete the IF. So now, turn that noise off. So now the IF's the line, we can check to make sure our uh, RF range is correct. Uh, so what we need to do next is we need to follow the instructions of how to do that on the R RF. Okay, well, RF alignment AM, here we go. Get the meter to an AF. Connect the output meter to an AM IF alignment, as in the AF IM alignment, which is across the speaker. Switch to short wave, which is there. Set the pointer to 18 megahertz, which is there. Injects an 80 megahertz via a wave dummy aerial. So where's its aerial input for shortwave? That's a different connection for shortwave, isn't it? Okay, I know where that is. That's easy. Need that. And I just plug it into there. So it's my Yeah, shortwave radio is coming through actually. Yeah, I'll close it enough. Okay, so that's connected to that. You can't see the, see the bloody meter again. You've got the meter there. Now you can see it now, can't you? Okay, so 18 megahertz. So the radio shorts to 18 meg. Just past now. Turn the volume down a bit. Turn the RF signal down a bit. Okay, we're at 18 megahertz, and we're off frequency by uh, a couple, couple of hundred kilohertz. Nothing, nothing, nothing huge. Uh, just check our alignment marks. Obviously, ah, oh, our alignment mark isn't quite right. There's an alignment mark on the scale. You have to check. I'm just checking that again. Maximum goes to the maximum, but the minimum doesn't go to the minimum, so okay, we're going to go leave the alignment mark alone because that will disturb my VHF setup as well. So get it just to 18. Let's just zoom out a bit so you can see what's going on. Okay, where are we? And just short, short wave oscillator C20. So where's C20? It should be somewhere underneath the unit. Okay, so I'm going to turn the unit over. Well, these are the uh, adjustments for the shortwave, so we just check our alignment's correct. Check we're still injecting 18 meg. I mean, it's it's not super critical on this, you know, it's 18.0 is fine. It's an analog scale, it's going to drift slightly anyway. So we're going for 18 meg, and we need to adjust this trimmer here. Now we need a plastic tool, really. Um, might have one of those. Unfortunately, the camera is in the way. Um, what I'll do then is I'll adjust it with a metal tool, but I'll have to keep removing it every time I give it a tweak. Um, let me bolt this on here. Let's see if I get a belt. No, it looks fairly promising. Um, Find a tool to adjust it. Too big. Let's use a pair of pliers and it's a bodge. I hate doing this, but this will get us going. There you go. Let me see what we've got. So that set the 18 megs up on the uh, first section, and that's the high frequency oscillator. So we should, what we should do now is go back to the lower end of the range and adjust the um, the uh, low frequency here with a, a tuning slug usually. So that's what I'm going to do next. I should think. Let's read the instructions, and it says adjust aerial trimmer C1 using the high 
higher oscillator frequency for maximum output. Okay, so you've got we've just adjusted the local oscillator trimmer, which is the one we've just done, and C1 will be the aerial trimmer, which will bring the gain in. So we'll do that by reducing the RF signal back until it's back in the noise. Like that. Let's check our tuning. Seems very sensitive actually. Send the signal right down, we're back into the noise. We're going to just C1. Uh, so C1 is probably the one opposite. Sure is. This is C1, which is our aerial trimmer. This will be more sensitive to me even getting up near it, as you think you'll find. It doesn't seem to be. Lost the signal, where are we? It's going weak again. We're heading getting for the maximum amount of signal level we can get. I think it's about there. Yeah, it's about there. It's very, very touchy now. Now we're just checking our 18 megahertz position, and it's still good. So, even though we've moved the dial very, very slightly, it's still more or less spot on 18 meg. So that's good. So that's the 18 megahertz range set. All right. What we need to do now is, yes, yeah, so use. The, set the pointer to 6 meg and adjust the first shortwave oscillator core to 6 meg. So this is the right the other end of the scale, right at the beginning of the scale, so I'm winding that down. And again, signal is generated to 6 meg, which is now on 6 meg. Can't hear anything. Just rock the frequency about. Yeah, slightly off frequency, not far. Which means we're going to have to go back and do the uh, other alignments again, but that's not a problem. Okay. Is it? Yeah. Set the point at 6 megs and adjust the shortwave oscillator core and then the aerial core for maximum output. So the, let's see if we can find the shortwave cores. It doesn't say which numbers they are. terribly useful. Could probably work it out. We've got, I don't know if you can see here, we've got four cores in here underneath here. Let me zoom in so you can see. Down here we've got behind this, where are we? We're looking at down here you can see we've got some cores that adjust the, uh, I don't think you can see that without me moving the camera, um, for adjusting the uh, Low frequency end. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell me which which number the cores are, which is a bit of a shortcoming, really. Um, it's not even listed in the uh, diagram. It's just got L numbers. So yeah, it just says the cores. Are out. That's really useful. So if I can work out where it is. Mm. Not an awful lot of help, so let me just try and work out what's going on there. Okay, it looks like L1 and L17 are these two cores here, this one and this one up here. So let's just check we've still got the signal. Okay, and we'll give it that give it a trim so we can get any change on anything. This one's moving in already. So it's, okay, so let's go to 6 meg. Mm. 
Nope, hopefully. Very close. Very, very close, a bit further. The wax is holding it back. Okay, we're more this there. Let's just try this coil at the top. I need to turn it slowly to let the wax relax so I don't break the core. There's six meg. Got maximum signal on there. This top core that fortunately. There we go. So that's peaked. So that's the six meg section. Return to 18 megs. So this is probably just to verify that the uh, these two cores will probably need adjusting now. Sure enough they do. Just see how far we're off. Can you hear it? I've got the volume up in that mic. frequency. Very jumpy on that. Okay, so that's good. So that's set the uh, shortwave band up. Ian Reid is from Sounds pretty sensitive on shortwave as well. So that's good. Okay, so that's the shortwave section done. Now I've got to switch the set to medium wave. Just bring the set round so you can see it. Just check you're still recording. I had to keep turning the uh, viewfinder off because the uh, the battery in this old Sony camera is not very good and I've got my charger here so I just need to keep checking that it's uh, still recording okay so it's a bit of short medium wave close this door okay uh, so it's a switch to medium wave and set pointed to M Okay, that's the M. There's a marker reference on the bottom of the uh, panel there. 193 meters and uh, inject a 1500 kilohertz. So I need to feed back into the uh, appropriate aerial socket. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to do the aerial alignment because I've got the ferret rod attached at the moment. Medium wave. Not get anything on there. There we go. Let's connect an earth up so we make that horrible 50 hertz wobble. There we go. Got a bit of a double hump 
there, but we're probably overloading the front end a bit. Okay, so 1500 kilohertz on the generator. Marker is correctly aligned. Uh, and it says just the medium wave aerial and oscillator trimmers for the highest oscillator frequency. Using the highest oscillator frequency for maximum output. So basically, the frequency we're on just for maximum output. So they probably. For some reason, again, they don't tell you which bloody capacitors they are, but I'm assuming it's the, the remaining two of the uh, of the set. So let's turn this over. I imagine it's these here. You can you see the? Let me just find a better tool for this, even though it is metal. No, too big. Okay. Okay. Arrow trimmer. making a lot of difference. I'm going to leave that there because the air trimmer won't work because I haven't got the ferret rod connected at the moment so even this is a bit suspicious if we can actually use this. Just set the low pointer to M again. Uh, 522 megahertz. There should be another M apparently. There's an F and an M, I assume that pretty means the same thing. And it's 575. Okay, so a bit off there. So this should be 574 kilohertz, it's 522 meters. Okay, I've done this around the wrong way, have I? So I'm on the low end range, I should be doing the low frequency now. Just the medium wave aerial oscillator trimmers for high oscillator frequency, which is what I've just done. Set so the points at M to 522 meters, 575 kilohertz. Just the first medium wave oscillator core. And then the medium wave aerial inductors by sliding the matching cord. That's so basically adjusting the, uh, the uh, coil on the uh, Farrat rod itself. So 575, and we need to adjust the medium wave oscillator coil. I'm just going to work out which one that is. The medium wave oscillator coil, it's actually used in this description here. Um, medium wave aerial. Medium wave oscillator L18. L18. I think I can see L18. Yep, L18 is this one down here. There's two actually, L18 and L19. Yes, is L18. Again, it's got wax on it, so. The other one's L4. C 
see L4. Is that L4 there? L18 is the one I've just adjusted, I think. Not doing anything, is it? Maybe having a very slight effect. But that's not the oscillator. An oscillator would make a big swing in difference, L18. Try L19. There's this one here. This one under a load of wax. Not doing anything either. So should, the game should be closed. No, it's open. And I'm at low frequency. What the hell's going on? That's wrong. Ah, oh, okay. So I made a balls up there. So I think uh, I need to go through this again. It looks to me like I've adjusted the wrong. This is the low end range. It's the low frequency range and the low frequency range. So I'll start again on the medium wave oscillator for the medium wave alignment. That's why I'm not getting adjustment because I'm adjusting it at the wrong end of the range. Okay, try again. 193 meters and eject to 1500 kilohertz. So my gang should be wide open. So I want that wide open. should be injecting now 193 meters which is there 193 meters 1500 how far are we off quite a way off a couple of hundred kilohertz that's where I've been twiddling so that's 1500 kilohertz let's get this right this time 1500 kilohertz and adjust Oscillated trimmers again. Okay, so this is this end. That fitted a minute ago, was it not fit now? Okay, that's why you have to be very careful and make sure you read the instructions properly. Um, yeah, so I've got, I found the mark now. Anyway, it's not very clearly marked. Uh, it's the aerial trimmer. I'm not going to adjust that a lot because it's not going to make a lot of difference, I don't think, because I haven't got the rod on, as I say. So the oscillator's set correctly. That's what I'm worrying about at the moment. That's good. So we're going to move back now to the other end mark, because there were two end marks. That's what's really confusing. Coming back to the other end mark. I do like the use of these marks because you can set, you know you're sitting the scale spot on then, uh, and then we put a lower frequency in of five seven five. Now in theory, that core should have an effect this time. So we're back on the core that didn't make any difference at the first time. Um, it's that one. Got so much wax on everything. There we go. So this is our oscillator working properly now. This is how you should should be. So that's good. And our other oscillator, this is the aerial trimmer. As I say, it won't make a lot of difference because there's no uh, there's no loading on the actual area. We've got the ferret rod connected. Um, and then go back again. So it's 1500 kilohertz to the marker. There's a marker, just our oscillator again. Go back again. Just keep doing these backs and forwards until you get the best response. You can't always get it perfect, but um, it, you should be able to get it pretty good. So go back to 545, was it? 575. So 
see we've got two two birdies. There's one there. And there's a stronger one there actually. So we'll just check our tuning pet games. Okay. I'm gonna try and bring the second stronger one in. It looks like I'm tuning on a a birdie. So five seven five, that's the one I'm on at the moment. I'm gonna tune out. No, it does say on the outer core is the one you're supposed to tune for. So that's, that's the first one. Yeah, that's good. So I'm tuned into the correct one. So that should be right now. If I go back to 1500 kilohertz, it should be more or less spot on with a marker alignment. Yep, spot on. So, I'll just show you what I'm, I'm doing for clarity. Zoom in so you can see. Hopefully the Roden Schwartz and the uh, here's our medium wave marker position just there. It's not that clear to see. It's just there. 1500 kilohertz, it's more or less spot on, and then 545 kilohertz or 575 kilohertz is this marker position down here, which we're on now. 575, so that's good. So that's the medium wave and the uh, short wave set up, uh, and then it just leaves the long wave, and I think that's just done with um, one oscillator core. Uh, and that's fine because I'm not interested in the rest of the band of long wave because the only thing transmitting on long wave is radio 4. Uh, so what I'll do, it's, it's actually very, uh, lots of birdies on this radio actually, it's, image rejection is pretty poor. So it's good, 198 kilohertz. Actually no, that wasn't a birdie that time, that was actually radio 4 coming through. So 1500 kilohertz with the Dwight Twitch. Droitwich uh, marking on the uh, scale, which is nice to see. No need to adjust that. That's that's on in spec, so that's good. So that's the um, basically that's the end of the alignment for this. So I think the best thing to do now is uh, pop it into the box, uh, connect it up to its internal aerials, and uh, let's see what it will do.